but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, I, I, I got this, this writer friend of mine, his name is Jim Bixler. And I remember the first time I ever met Jim, we, we were at a writer's conference in Colorado and he was one of the speakers. And um, we finished up the conference business in the morning and we asked Jim if he would like to come over in the afternoon and have lunch with us. And he said, sure, and he came over and he had lunch with us. And I noticed right away that Jim was very fascinated by things. We, we, we sat on a, a front porch swing and, and he heard the creaking of the, uh, the rusted chain links as we swung back and forth. And he, he became curious about that. And he was looking at the, at the chain and, and there was a, a pinion pine in the front yard. And he went and he, he plucked some of the pine needles off and he crumbled it into his hand. And he, he sort of separated the flex away, looking at each one in turn. And, and, he, and he ran his fingertips over the, the rough bark of the pinion tree. And then each time the wind blew, he would, he would breathe deeply of the, of the aroma, the fragrance in the air. And then uh, I brought out a couple of cans of beer, and just the, the crack of the tab fascinated him. And when he took a drink, it was like the, the first time he had had a drink in his life. I've never seen anybody enjoy the taste of beer so much. And I watched him all afternoon. It helps if it's good beer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I watched him all afternoon behave this way, and it, it finally dawned on me what was so appealing about him. I realized he wasn't used to being alive yet. Everything through his eyes was fresh and brand new. And when I see you uh, at a lecture or give a talk or do something on TV, I, I get a lot of that same vibe. It, that, that, yeah, you've been studying these things for a long time, but, but it's still fresh and it's still brand new to you and the enthusiasm comes through. Is that, a, is that an accurate assessment or am I just way off the trail? Well, I, I take that as a very high compliment. Thank you. What you're suggesting, not to put words in your mouth, is that I still maintain an enthusiasm for my work, uh, not only to do the work, but to share the work with others. By the way, that's an enthusiasm that I, don't, that I think is inbred in us as humans, because every kid has that enthusiasm. A kid is looking at the ice, they're looking at the water, they spill the water on purpose by accident, yeah. you know. They, they turn over rocks, they pluck petals off of leaves, they tear bark off a tree, they bang the pots and pans in the kitchen, they, they will do things that is, they'll even do things that, you know, they'll jump in a puddle in the street with both feet. They'll catch snowflakes in their mouth. They do things that adults forgot how to do, that is long gone within adults. I think it's because reality descends on us. Uh, you, gotta, you got bills to pay, you got, you know, all of a sudden life becomes something you have to, for, for most people, not the most disenfranchised, obviously, the, all of life is a problem. But for your average person, when life kicks in, you lose the luxury of curiosity. And it's curiosity that stimulates scientific thinking. Without it, you're susceptible to other people telling you what is and what isn't, without you doing the investigation yourself. And so, uh, thank you for noticing that in me. I do feel it. Yes. Within. Well, it comes through. And, and, and I was going to say the, the Science Now program, uh, first of all, it's, it's so well produced and it's visually stunning. And, and all of those things, and of course, I'll share that with the producer. A, a lot of hard work goes in. With yeah, them by do a lot that of because yeah. everybody I talk to says the mm -hmm. same thing, and and, it, and it's, the science in it is so good. But then you add that element that you have, that that intangible, that enthusiasm, and it just makes science so much more accessible to not only children but to adults as well. So for those of us who are bitter and jaded and, and not <laughs> down by life, you know, we can we can sort of feel that that uh, that wonderment and that awe again. Well, I'm glad because that's. Our goal, our goal for the program for Nova Science Now is to show science not as some subject, okay, cr come across the line, now it's time to take your medicine and learn the science. That's, that's the wrong attitude towards it as a subject. We want people to recognize that science, that you're bathed in scientific phenomena. And the more you realize that science is not simply a subject that you can choose to learn or ignore, that you are immersed in it. It's fundamental 
to your health, your well-being, your relationship to the natural world. I, our hope is that people will go forward with just a different attitude. That science is life. It's not something separate from life. And so I'm, I'm glad you notice it because that's we that's we purposefully construct stories to convey this very fact. Mm -hmm.